All right, guys. Um, so yeah, Hyperloop. All right, we're building the Hyperloop. Um, I'm sure you guys all know what the Hyperloop is. Everybody? Are you really sure? <laughs> so well, we have a little video here that actually explains a little bit um, what has happened, where we are right now. So um, let's just watch it, and then I explain you a little bit more. America has always been a nation of doers. We build things. We take risks. And we believe that if you have a good idea and are willing to work hard enough, you can turn that idea into a successful business. Billionaire philanthropist Elon Musk has hinted at a new high-speed transport system that could put planes and trains out of business. I have a name for it, name for it which is called the Hyperloop. So what's Hyperloop? Mr. Musk's plan? Move people using a massive vacuum tube combined with a magnetic levitation system. Kind of like a Jetsons tunnel? It's something like that, yeah. Here's how he teased the idea in May at an All Things D conference. It's a cross between a Concorde and a railgun. It's called the Hyperloop. It's a system of giant suspended tubes. Riding within are capsules carrying people or freight traveling on cushions of air at speeds of up to 1,200 k's per hour, or roughly one kilometer every three seconds. A tube that would be on pillars from Los Angeles to San Francisco, and inside there would be capsule cars that would be rocketed forward up to 700 miles an hour, and that there would be a fan on the front. Elon Musk basically says that this is the way of the future. How do you like something that uh, can never crash? Mm -hmm. um, it is immune to weather. It goes uh, three or four times faster than the, the, the sort of bullet train, and it would cost you uh, much less um, than, than an air ticket. It will only cost to build this six or seven billion dollars. Oh. Compare that to the 65 billion for the current high-speed rail plans for California. He believes this is a viable, valuable alternative for mass transit between these two destinations. Could something like the Hyperloop actually be the answer to super fast, environmentally friendly, high speed travel between our busiest cities? So the gauntlet has been thrown down. A design document for a whole new super cool way to travel. The only thing now, will someone pick it up and make the Hyperloop a reality? There are some companies that are, that are forming to try to make the Hyperloop happen and uh, I, encourage them. I think that's that's great. Um, I'm super focused on Tesla and SpaceX and to, to you know small amount on Solar City. So that that basically completely uses up my my brain. Tesla founder Elon Musk proposed this new technology called Hyperloop and it's being developed right now in Playa Vista here in this hangar behind me. The only resistance would be the air in front of the capsule which uh, we move to the back by using a compressor. Company Hyperloop has teamed up with the students to create this tube technology that's designed to connect cities up to 400 miles apart. Dirk Alborn says it's safer and more efficient than the railroad. Well the system is complete, completely computerized so um, you know you optimize the system and then you actually have the humans to monitor it. In railroads, most accidents were all human factors. Plus, a lot of the derailments are actually happened because something's on the track. So we're in a closed system, we're completely managed by a computer system. There's no human factor that can actually create those issues. We actually plan on uh, seeing the first Hyperloop very, very soon starting. Can you imagine uh, and walk us through what it might be like to travel at the speed of sound? It's not going to be much different than uh, sitting in an airplane, actually. Obviously, for us, it's very important to make it as a good of an experience as possible. So This is an independent organization that has formed. We have 170 engineers, scientists, and uh, really great professionals mm -hmm. with amazing backgrounds. The race is on. Elon Musk's vision for a high-speed passenger pods, known as the Hyperloop, is one step closer to becoming reality this morning. One of the known companies competing to capitalize on Musk's proposal, announcing today it has struck a deal with landowners in Central California to build the first full-scale Hyperloop along a five-mile stretch along I-5 with construction set to begin in 2016. Let's bring in Dirk Alburn, who is the man who runs the Hyperloop Transportation Technologies team, which is announcing this deal with Quay Valley, California. Uh, Dirk, tell me about this deal and, and really when you expect this Hyperloop, this five-mile stretch to be finished. Quay Valley is supposed to be breaking ground um, beginning of 2016. That's um, when we will be start um, working on our development. So 
we will be starting ground uh, at the same time. Uh, we At this moment, we expect to be done by 2018. Hyperloop now appears one step closer to reality. Starting next year, that theory will turn into a groundbreaking in Quay Valley, Kings County off of I-5. A developer there has just committed a big chunk of his private land toward the project. It's a five-mile loop that would take visitors through a planned entertainment district. There's going to be a test track. Elon Musk has announced that he's going to build a small-scale test track. It's a necessary step for us to be building a full-scale version, and um, Quay Valley is a sustainable model town of the 21st century, so it's a perfect fit. They're expecting over 10 million uh, visitors per year, so we will actually be able to re uh, generate revenues very, very fast. The company plans to go public later this year. We want to do a public offering. We want to give the, uh, our community that's supporting us the possibility to own parts of, uh, of the company. We want to make sure that um, the people that have been helping building um, the company and this technology are able to um, participate in, in, in the investment in the fundraising and the upside of the company. With their contributions to Hyperloop, these students from around the world now have stock options in the company, but they say they're not in it for the money. As a student, I start to feel like um, I'm in, uh, in part of a, some great career that might change the world. Will the Hyperloop kill the railroad? The Hyperloop is going to do to the U.S. what the railroads did in the 1800s. So um, it will change the way we live. It's possible today. It's based on existing technologies. And it's the right time, it's the right moment to finally get something doing like this. Is it visionary? In 30 years' time, <laughs> will you and I be sitting on our rocking chairs going, well, we talked about it then, and he did it. Do you think this is possible? This is not just... Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. For all those who said this is just a neat little thing <laughs> to draw on a cocktail napkin, these guys are saying it will become reality. All right. So, <clears throat> just to recap, all right, what's the Hyperloop? So imagine a capsule levitating inside a tube filled with people and moving really, really fast from point A to point B, okay? Inside this tube, we create a low pressure environment so very similar to um, an airplane that goes into high altitudes, it encounters very little resistance and can therefore go very fast with very little energy. This is probably the most important part. It's completely green. We actually um, produce more energy than we're using. We use solar, wind, kinetic energy, regenerative braking. I think we get more than 61% of the energy back we use during acceleration when we decelerate. And in certain cases, even geothermal. So this is super important because if you imagine that there's no rail transport, passenger transport system in the world right now that's profitable. They all cost money continuously. So governments, they, they spend money into these rail systems and then continuously have to, con have to pay. So if you take, I take an example in LA, if you take the metro in LA, you pay, I think, $1.50 for the ticket, and it's subsidized with $2.50. So each taxpayer, basic, taxpayer basically pays um, every time someone else takes the metro. It doesn't make sense for us. So we are a startup, we are a business, this has to make sense. This was one of the first things we actually looked at. We didn't necessarily look at, um, you know, it's uh, all the technical details, but this was f for sure the first one we needed to solve. The system is based on pylons, which is very important because you can actually go along existing um, right of ways. So imagine one of the problems when you do something like this, when they do the high-speed rail, right, all these issues they're having. They're having because they have to go on someone else's property. So um, being on pylons means you have to acquire less land, for example, right? But it also makes it much more safer because you can integrate earthquake-stable technology to make sure that uh, in case of an earthquake, it's the most safest place. 